we're in Daniel 12, chapter 12, where dun, da, 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 the Archangel Michael appears again. I just love when he shows up. And, and I just want to, again, tell you guys, I'm so sorry that some of my previous understandings of Archangel Michael were not biblical. They were experiential, and um, and so I've learned a lot about that. And you know, next year when we are done with these daily um, videos, I'm going to spend that time uh, recording a free video series about the angels of the Bible and kind of compare that with the old New Age way of looking at angels. Because I actually prefer, much prefer, the biblical viewpoint of angels to the New Age. And I, you know, I had those experiences with the angels, and um, they were real, but I now know that some of those angels weren't actually angels, they were demons. And, and so I'll talk about that too, about how to d discern, etc. So not to scare you, but Archangel Michael is for reals. Um, he is the angel assigned to watch over Israel. And so let's talk about who is Michael the Archangel. And this is from Got Questions. So um, Michael shows up in the book of Daniel, as we've seen, also the book of Jude. And we're going to see him and all of his glory in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. So Michael is a warrior angel who engages in spiritual combat. And we already know that the name Archangel means angel of the highest rank. Most angels in the Bible are portrayed as messengers, but Michael is described in all three books as contending, fighting, or standing against evil spirits and principalities. So that's something that we've already, you know, I had covered before in my teachings. Uh, I think the big difference is that no one's calling Archangel Michael but God in the Bible. And so my error was calling Archangel Michael and then who knows who's showing up and such but he's definitely for real and um, god does send him but it's not up to us to call him nowhere in the bible does anyone call on an angel that's that's the new age part that um that i was led astray on and i apologize if that affected you i've learned and that's why i'm doing these free videos to bring everyone up to date and i'll have another free book about this etc so don't worry, I got you covered, okay? I'm not doing hit and run on you all. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, so uh, anyway, so, so Michael is standing against evil spirits and principalities. Um, there's only two na angels who, are, who have names in the Bible, uh, Michael and Gabriel. Scripture only gives us hints of their movements during human events, but it's safer to say that Michael, Archan uh, the archangel, is a powerful being. Despite his great power, Michael is still in total submission to God. His dependence on the Lord's power, uh, we will see in the book of Jude, uh, chapter 1, verse 9, the righteous angels have a rank and are submissive to authority, and for this reason, they are used as a picture of submission. Taking into consideration the strength of Michael the Archangel, his submission to God is all the more beautiful. So he's so Michael's got all the strength and all the power, and he still submits to God, which what God questions is saying here is it's not a sign of weakness to yield to God. I mean, look at Michael. He's not weak, and he still yields to God. It's a sign of smarts to yield to God. It's smart to say, your will, not my will. Right? Jesus said that in the Garden of Gethsemane. So the prophet Daniel is told that Michael the archangel is the great prince who protects your people in Daniel 12.1. Daniel's people are the Jews, and the fact that Michael protects them suggests that God has set various holy angels over various countries or people groups. The demons seem to have a similar hierarchy as we saw with the, um, the demon prince over Persia and the demon prince over Greece. And so some authorities say that it could be that there's demons and angels over every country. The fact that Michael is a great prince indicates that he has authority 
in the spiritual realm. And there are others, Daniel 10, 13, um, Michael says that he's, it, it says Michael is one of the chief princes or one of the archangels. So there's others. They're not named though. Uh, Michael the archangel has, it seems, a prominent role in the events of the end times. And so we're going to see um, in Revelation more of that. But in Daniel 12, we see that Daniel... Uh, the prophet was told by the angel of the Lord that during the time of the end, Michael will arise and there would be a time of unsurpassed trouble, a reference to the great tribulation. So the angel of the Lord is actually usually attributed as uh, what's called a Christophany, which is um, uh, Jesus's spirit coming in before his earthly ministry. So, uh, Anyway, during the tribulation, Israel is guaranteed protection. And this will be followed by the great resurrection of the dead people, not their dead bodies coming out of graves or, you know, don't worry if someone's cremated. It's not like that. It's glorified bodies raising from the dead. Some to everlasting life in heaven and others to everlasting um, not life going to Follow whoever they were following on earth is who they'll follow afterwards. So if they were following the devil, they'll follow the devil afterwards. And that's not a nice place at all. So the rapture of the church, which means that believers will be caught up in the air with Jesus and the angels to go to heaven, will be accompanied by the voice of the archangel, which could be a reference to Michael. It doesn't say, though, and we can't make any assumptions. Um, anyway, so that's Archangel Michael. We'll meet up again with him in the book of Revelation. Our New Testament reading, 1 John, is, is very interesting. This is a, a verse that all sensitive people should memorize, okay? <laughs> this is called testing the spirits. Um, that's something that I learned the hard way. Um, I used to think, because I was raised in this belief that there is no devil, there's no evil, the only bad thing in the world is negative thoughts. And as long as you stay positive, that you're safe spiritually. And so um, when spirit, you know, spirits would come to me, I wouldn't test them. I'd think that they were all good. You know, every, everyone's an angel. And so I just want to say that, that is, I got burned really bad from that. And I'm so sorry if that affected you too. But going into the Bible gives us the antidote and that is in 1 John 4, and I'm just going to read starting with verse 1, essential reading for sensitive people. He says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. So that would be like channeled authors, you know, channeled books, um, people who are mediums, people who are psychics, people who say they're prophets, maybe they say they're a Christian prophet. He says, don't believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they have the Spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the Spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth, the gospel truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. And remember, there's a lot of Antichrists, according to what we've read here. So I just wanted to talk about the spirit of the Antichrist, which, of course, nobody wants to have. Maybe some people might think it's cool. Um, but I, I don't, I would think <laughs> anyone in their right mind would not want the spirit of the Antichrist. It doesn't give that person power or fame or glory or anything. It's just horrible. Um, God Question says it's vital to understand what John is saying here. A predominant worldview when he wrote this letter suggested that diverse spirits were at work in the world. Many false teachings, mystery religions, Spiritual experiences and variations of Christianity were emerging at that time, including Gnosticism. 
The spiritual atmosphere was not unlike what we have in the world today. People entertain countless views regarding the truth. So John presented a definitive solution for wading through this variety of beliefs and teachings. He instructed us to pay attention and test the spirits. But how do we test the spirits? How can you and I discern which teachers are imparting truth? How do we recognize if that teacher has the spirit of the Antichrist or not? So these spirits that John spoke of were not merely disembodied supernatural beings or demons. John was teaching that a prophet or a teacher was the actual mouthpiece for a spirit, so channeling demons, which I did. I, I'll admit it. I didn't know I was doing it. I feel horrible that I did it, but I was doing that. And a lot of people have no idea they're channeling demons. And the thing is, when you channel demons, just like the devil, uh, it's, it's a mixture of truth and lies. And the demons give you just enough truth to hook you in. Like A Course in Miracles, for instance, is, gives you enough truth which says forgiveness is key. That's true. Jesus taught us we have to forgive. But then it goes into twisting it with lies that there was no crucifixion, that um, the only devil in the world is, is your ego, and it just goes on and on to talk you out of the Bible. And it says that the Course of Miracles is the substitute. And it, doesn't, and it denies Jesus and the Gospel. So the Course of Miracles fitting under what John, who was the closest person to Jesus in his earthly ministry. Um, if John says it, I believe it. And so John's saying that if someone doesn't acknowledge Jesus in the biblical sense, that's a false teacher. Not only false, but that's got, he's got an antichrist spirit. So we have to test this. It's, you know, you, you spend more time kicking your car tires when you're trying to buy a car than you do selecting your spiritual teacher. We shouldn't go to spiritual teachers just because they're um, popular, or there's a lot of ads for them, or they've written a lot of books, or they dress cute, or anything like that. We, we have to look at what John said here. Right? Right. And I learned the hard way, and I don't want anyone else to. So John says, Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. That is the spirit of the Antichrist. Anyone who does not acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Bible presents him is inspired by the spirit of the Antichrist. The word Antichrist literally means against Christ. People who say that Jesus is not from God are controlled by the spirit of the Antichrist. So those who say that Jesus was just a man, uh, a good teacher, those who say, like I used to, that Jesus is an ascended master, um, they're channeling the spirit of the Antichrist. Like I, I used to, I admit it. Uh, and I have repented for it a lot to God. And I'm trying to make it up to all of you by doing, um, you know, more teachings for free and such, and free books and such. So anyway, Satan opposes Christ and he desires to deceive people into a false view of who Jesus is. The spirit of the Antichrist teaches against Christ. To twist the truth about Jesus is to twist the gospel. Satan works to spread lies about Jesus and keep us all in the dark. And just keep going reading the Bible. Uh, we need it. It's absolutely essential, especially as this world gets crazier and crazier. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and pray out our video. We sure appreciate you being with us today. Oh, our Heavenly Father, we so look forward to this time when we all gather together in this video and we all focus on your word. And we just praise you for giving us this book of instructions. We, oh, we're, we're so delighted to meditate upon your law, about uh, to learn from Genesis to Revelation about why you sent Jesus to be with all of us. And and why we need to follow Jesus to eternity, and why it's so important to yield to you 
and not try to do life on our own, no matter how smart we are. And Lord, we just want to ask you to please join us in lifting up anyone who's angry or depressed or frightened or any sort of struggle that they're going through right now. We, we especially want to pray for those who are feeling lonely as we get into the holidays, those who are perhaps dealing with grief over a loss, perhaps a change of circumstance, perhaps they're afraid and they can't see where they're going, but you can see where they're going and you are, you are with them always, and so they're never alone, truly. We know, God, that you love everyone, whether they love you back or not. And for this, we are so grateful at your mercy and your grace. And we know that you extend a hand of salvation to anyone who will accept this gift. That's a free gift. And we pray that everyone today who has not accepted your gift will say to you, God, I need you. God, I... I choose to turn away from my previous lifestyle that has anything that's against your will, and I apologize and repent for anything that I've done that's, that's uh, contemptible to you, detestable to you, anything I've done that is against your will, Lord, I'm sorry. And Lord, I am ready to ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I do believe that he came to earth, that you sent him, fully God and fully human, that he suffered and died on the cross to pay the price for my sin and everybody's sin, and that you rose him from the dead three days later. I do believe this, Lord, and, and I want to be saved, and I pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to dwell inside of me and everyone who's watching here, and help all of us to nurture this seed that's planted like the parable of the sower and just nurture it with taking all of the guidance you give us in the bible and putting it into action we know we're not saved by our action we're saved by your grace and our faith and we also know that as we are saved our actions do change to reflect your glory and to bring glory to you in the name of jesus amen so thanks so much for spending time with us. We really appreciate it. 